Troop to colors. Play right for the troops. throughout the entire ceremony. Forgotten by many, but remembered by a few. 
A group of volunteers, not knowing what lay ahead, came aboard to see what could be done. Now, many thousands of volunteer man hours, and over $2 million later, you have before you the restored silver sides and the only submarine listed on the National Register of Historic Places. While we are here today to remember the 52 submarines and crew lost during World War II, you and those crews are remembered every day by the people who visit this ship. Last night, a group of youths, the next generation, participated in an education program aboard the Silver Sides. They have spent the night learning about your life and experiences aboard a submarine during World War II. Through this program, your heritage of the silent service is lived again every weekend throughout the year. Great Lakes Naval and Maritime Museum and its living memorial, the USS Silversides, thank you for visiting us today. I'd like to introduce H.T. Vandy Kirkhoff, your National Secretary Treasurer, who will be the Master of Ceremonies for the memorial service. Thank you. It goes without saying, we welcome you all for this is the presentation of the ceremony. Directly behind me are the original crew members of the USS Silver Sides. Not only do we have the crew here at the Silver Sides, but we also have one of their former commanding officers. This man was commissioned as an ensign in June 1933, attended sub school 1937, served aboard Shark R18, commanded the Shark, or rather the R18, and also was commanding officer of the Solar Sides from June of 1943 through December of 44, during which time. He served as commanding officer of six patrols, during which there were 14 confirmed sinkings. Our admiral guest is the winner of three Navy Crosses. After the war, he served as Subron 1, Comp Sub Deer 52, and Comp Subron 18. He was selected as Rear Admiral in September 1961 retired August 1st of 1968. It gives me extreme pleasure and an honor to introduce to you Rear Admiral John S. Coy, the skipper of Silver Sides, retired. Thank you very much, Van. It is a distinct honor and pleasure to be here, and I'm glad that we have so many of the uh, Silver Sides crew here. And also our new crews, really, the ones that are doing the work these days, volunteers back in the, at the park. person I wish could be here, and that's the fellow I relieved, and I think many of you know him, Creed Burlingame. He was the first skipper of the Silver Sides, and he would be the first today to say that uh, when the TV came on last night, it was going to be a rainy day, he'd say, no way. But when the Silver Sides was commissioned, it was raining, and as they hoisted the commission pennant, the sun broke out. Silver Sides has always been a, a, a lucky submarine. Oh, we're lucky to have uh, survived the war, and uh, now we're uh, lucky to, to still be afloat and still have the loving care of the museum people. Uh, Van asked me to, to uh, say a few remarks on the incidents aboard the submarines. I promise not to tell too many sea stories, but uh, there are 
a couple I would like to mention. One of them happened uh, on our eight patrol south of Palau. We were cruising on the surface in a half bright sunny afternoon, and all of a sudden, the alert officer did that. Lieutenant Malone, who just happens to be here, what are you doing? <laughs> he spotted uh, two torpedoes headed right for us. And uh, he successfully combed the tracks and then on emergency full speed. And we uh, got over, went, ran for about a half hour. When I figured we were over the horizon, we dove and with the intention of turning around and getting that jack sub when he surfaced. However, we had uh, no sooner go than the word went out, fire on the maneuvering room. Well, as you know, the maneuvering room is, uh, links everything on board. Without the maneuvering room or the cubicle, you, you, it doesn't matter if your motors are good or your engines are good or your batteries, you're not going any place. Well, we were stopped and we bounced around at various depths and uh, the fire kept getting worse. We, uh, we used all the CO2 extinguishers and then we're down in rescue breathing apparatus to fight the fire. And uh, people were starting to pass out, and smoke was filling the boat. So we finally decided that we'd have to let that jack sub go, and we surfaced and aired out the boat. Fortunately, what had caused the fire was when uh, they rang up emergency full speed. I think the, uh, the electricians and the engineers overdid it a little bit, and they heated the bus bars in the control room in the cubicle red hot, and that just flashed the uh, port insulation in that. So anyway, we uh, were able to continue on patrol. Uh, another incident uh, I think illustrates some of the more fun times we had. Uh, as you know, the trigger and the silver sides. The trigger and the silver sides were both built in their own. They both uh, had many of our patrols coincided, triggers in our wolf path. Uh, anyhow, we left Naran at the same time, headed for Pearl after an overhaul, and the skipper, Fritz Harlfren, and myself, we decided we'd have a race. And we had the salmon along with us, and so we said, well, uh, salmon can be the umpire, and we'll uh, have a race for one hour. We start, submerge, make a battle service, Run full power, and at the end of the hour, we'll move ahead on the race. Well, the crew, when I heard about this, uh, I said, boy, let's make some money on this. And so, uh, <laughs> even though they'd just come back from Market Street in, in San Francisco and didn't have much money in their pockets, why, uh, we did scrounge up $500 or more. And so we started the race. Everything was going fine. And we were just about even for the first 15, 20 minutes, and then the trigger kept easing ahead a little bit. And uh, we were going on the pit lock that showed 21 knots, which was the fastest we'd ever gone. And uh, at the end of the hour, the trigger ended up with about a ship length ahead of us. But I found out later that what the trigger had done, she, she pumped out her variable ballast. So she was uh, lighter than we were. <laughs> I should have made a the uh, condition of the race that you had to dive after the end of that hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know uh, this is a this ceremony of 52. That sort of reminds me a little bit of a deck of cards. I play cards a lot, 52, 52 cards. Well, this was a deck all full of aces as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we made the uh, in the submarine force, about a little over 1,600 patrols in World War II. And uh, if you divide 1,600 by 52, you come out about 30. So actually, your odds on any one patrol was about 1 in 30. But uh, I know you know all those statistics. However, there's one, one more thing I'd like to say. It's about the present day submarines. I got a chance to talk to them and meet, meet them there in San Diego and other places. And they're a tremendous bunch of uh, men. And uh, the boats they have, gee, those nuclear boats, you can uh, 
about 35 knots, uh, submerged all day, all night. And uh, what, what we could have done with that? Huh? <laughs> well, anyhow, I'm sure, I know that the men, uh, they've inherited the, uh, the courage and the stamina and the valor of their fathers and grandfathers. Thank you very much. The moment has arrived for the most important part of our national convention. Our memorial service, the tolling of votes. Most of you people are well informed and know and have seen the tolling of the votes or the tolling of the bells in the past. This is the ceremony which commemorates and memorializes our shipmates still on eternal control. If you'll all stand at attention, please. See you later. Damaged by a Japanese aircraft, destroyed at the beating Navy Yard, four men lost. S-36, destroyed after running for ground. S-26, sunk by close to the Gulf of Panama, all hands lost. Shark 1, sunk by Japanese warships, all hands lost. Kurtz, S-27. S-39.
Surface, surface, surface. You'll have the benediction by our other national chapter, Father Kirchner. 
Heavenly Father, these past few days we've been gathered together for the business of the organization, to have fun. But right now, we've done the most important thing of the entire convention, keeping in mind the memory of our departed comrades. For them, we pray that you will grant them eternal rest. For all of us gathered here, we pray that you will grant us a safe return to our homes with your blessing. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of us. Amen. Amen. Now I would like to give one of our old orders. Make preparations to get underway. Station the maneuvering watch. <laughs> Deputy Commissioner Charles Robert, Chicago Fire Department, for the use of the U.S. Dill, our fireboat, one of the fireboats in Chicago, and also for the use of the Chicago Police Marine Unit. Closing, let me say, God bless you all. Fair sailing, a clear trip home. God willing, we'll all be together again next year in Portland. We'll see you all at the back of tonight. The ship will be open for visitors. <laughs>